Hi, I'm Ethan, and today we will be talking about sterilizing and sanitizing hydroponic equipment. We will talk about why that's important, we will talk about the difference between sterilization and sanitization, we will talk about the materials you need to complete these actions, and we will also talk about the areas that will need to be cleaned, how frequently they need to be cleaned, and some common do's and don'ts with sterilization and sanitation. So why is cleanliness in your grow room important? Number one priority for cleanliness in your grow room is the health of your plants. If you do not keep your grow room clean, you are opening up pathways for disease and fungal pathogens. Number two would be human health. If you are not being clean in your grow room and around your plants, you are going to be harvesting produce that is not clean and probably not healthy for your customers. And number three for why cleanliness and sanitation is important would be certifications and standards. There are many certifications and standards out there, whether you're trying to grow organic or get any other certification. Keep in mind that these usually have very detailed standards when it comes to cleanliness and sanitation. So make sure you check with that specific licensing board for that certification to make sure you are doing everything correctly. Now we will talk a little bit about the difference between sanitation versus sterilization. First you have sanitation. What sanitation is, is just general cleanliness of your grow room. So things like removing dead plant material from your towers, cleaning up any spills or any messes, sweeping, mopping, cleaning out your filters, scrubbing down your IBC, keeping your harvest and planting area clean and well prepped. These are things that all entail sanitation. So sterilization is much different. It refers to killing microbial life, anything like bacteria, microbes, fungi, anything small like that that could cause disease in your plants. This is typically accomplished with things like bleach, hydrogen peroxide, antibacterial products like Lysol. These can be applied in sprays or dunks. You can soak things in it that is essential to make sure you are killing off this microbial life. So in conclusion, you will be wanting to use both sanitation and sterilization in combination to make sure that your grow room is as clean and healthy as it can possibly be. Now we will talk a little bit about the materials that you need to use to help keep your grow room sanitized and sterilized. If you see down below here, we have a various array of cleaning utensils. Uh, anything like scrubby sponges like this, stiff bristled brushes, uh, long handled brushes are great for getting in hard to reach areas like your reservoir when you want to clean that out. It is also very important to have gloves and eye protection. You will be using some various chemicals throughout your sanitation and sterilization processes. These are great to have on hand. Some other things that can help that we don't have up here are things like scissors to help you remove dead plant material that may be clinging to your plants. You will also need your various cleaning agents to help complete this. You will have things like bleach, things like hydrogen peroxide, Bonus points if you go for food grade hydrogen peroxide. It is a little bit more highly concentrated than what you can buy on the store shelf and is thusly a little bit more economical to use in a larger operation. However, if you can't get that easily, regular peroxide will work. Uh, we also like to use a degreasing agent for general sanitation around the room. Now remember that's just cleaning up spills and messes. That is not killing microbial life. So a general degreaser like this works really, really well. If you don't like using things like that and you're more of the crunchy organic type, you can definitely use vinegar for cleaning. That will work as well. One more option that we have for sanitization that we do not have up here is an ozone machine. Now ozone can both be pumped out into the air of your grow room and it can uh, sterilize basically anything it comes into contact with in the air including human life, that makes it a little bit dangerous because you cannot be around while that ozone machine is running. Now, if you are using ozone to help sanitize your hydro solution by pumping that ozone into your nutrient reservoir, 
It is much safer for human use. Uh, you don't have to worry about toxicity of having that ozone running and having people nearby. So you can run ozone in your reservoir to help keep that clean. Now keep in mind with the various sanitation and sterilization agents that we have up here that you may want to use that there are toxic doses of these if you're using these around the plants. Obviously you would not want to just go dumping bleach or peroxide into your reservoir willy-nilly, you're probably going to kill your plants. However, there is a safe amount of peroxide that you can add to your reservoir while you have plants in it. Bleach, however, I would not recommend adding while you have plants in your system. Bleach is more for sterilizing things while you have nothing in your system so you can flush it out and start fresh. And obviously with cleaning agents like this for sanitation, these really probably should not be getting into your reservoir. They probably will kill your plants. However, using these to clean things around the general area of your plants is perfectly safe as long as you are not getting them on the foliage. So we've talked a lot about all this various uh, sterilization and sanitation equipment. Now, what are you gonna do with it? What do you want to use it on? First off, it is recommended to start with sanitizing and sterilizing your room. So you would want to sweep and mop your floors. You would want to uh, clean, scrub down your walls, things like that. Anything to keep your room just neat and tidy and have less problems with mess, you're gonna have less problems with plant disease. Next up, you want to keep your equipment sanitized and sterilized as well. This one is really, really important, guys. You wanna keep your hydro system clean and sterilized. You wanna keep all the tools that you use with it cleaned and sterilized. If you're not keeping something like scissors or pruning shears clean and sterilized, you're opening up the possibility of infection in your plants every single time you cut with an unsterilized piece of equipment. That is key to limiting the spread of disease. So more cleaning that we do for our equipment. With a vertical system like what we do, we uh, like to blow out our top lines for the drip emitters. That helps keep the, keep the top lines very cleaned out and prevent clogging. We also like to uh, vacuum out the drainage. That keeps any debris out from clogging up our drainage and causing floods. And generally, we just like to uh, give a good sterilized wipe down of tower faces, gutters, rack faces, anything like that, keep it nice and clean. When it comes to your reservoir, you will either want to uh, occasionally scrub down the sides of the reservoir or you can use a pressure washer. Uh, if you don't have a pressure washer, this is where a big brush like this really comes in handy to reach into those hard to get places of your reservoir. But once you have scrubbed it down, you can always go ahead and sterilize your reservoir with something like bleach or peroxide and then flush your tank out, fill it up with clean, fresh water and start new. Uh, we also like to keep our filters very, very clean. Remember to check your swirl filter if you're using a larger system. That one gets all your large particulate matter and doesn't need to be checked quite as often as your Y filter, which even a lot of smaller systems will have. Y filters need to be cleaned very, very regularly. Uh, sterilization is not quite so important on there, especially if you're running something like ozone or hydrogen peroxide on a regular basis in your reservoir. Uh, otherwise, just keeping your Y filter just cleaned out and sanitized is good enough. When you're cleaning your tower media, remember to remove as many roots as you can. Uh, you also may want at some point to sterilize the media from your towers. You can do that with dilute bleach. You can also do that with hydrogen peroxide. Uh, there are two ways you can go about doing this. You can either put these into your reservoir and run them through the towers and let it cycle through your entire system. If you are doing bleach, remember to flush the system after doing that. Another option is to get a flood table tray that you can actually dunk that tower media into your dilute bleach solution. So you may be asking yourself, we've cleaned just about everything in the grow room, now what about the plants? Do you sanitize and sterilize the plants? 
Not necessarily. As I mentioned before, you uh, may want to remove your dead growth, anything like that that may be left on your plants. If you leave that behind, that can open you up to fungal or bacterial infection in your plants, any other nasty diseases like that. Now you don't necessarily sterilize your plants. A lot of these sterilizing agents will kill your plants. However, you can do things like uh, fungicidal sprays and dunks. However, that is more of a pest control type of discussion that doesn't really fit in with this video, but know that if you do need to, say, sanitize and sterilize your plants, there are fungicides available to help you do that. How often do you want to be sanitizing and sterilizing everything? Now, this is a very wide open subject that's up for debate. It really, really depends on the size of your system. If you're doing just a little home system to supply yourself, you're probably not going to be cleaning stuff out as much as someone who has an organic certification that is supplying, you know, thousands of customers. They're going to be cleaning all the time. Now, usually most people in a hobby market can get away with just cleaning when they need to so it doesn't cause problems of fungal infections, bacterial infections in the plants, or doesn't cause drainage and flow problems within their reservoir pumps, drip emitters, anything like that. So once again, remember if you have a certification or a license, anything like that, check with that licensing board, that certification board for their cleaning standards and their schedule. If you are not licensed, not certified, I still recommend keeping up to a regular cleaning schedule. Try doing everything at least once a week, if not more frequently. You may need to go more frequently to prevent things like clogs and you're gonna have random spills and messes anyways. Remember that cleaning is almost a daily activity in the hydroponic world. Now that we've gone through all the basics of sanitation and sterilization, we're going to give you a little bit of safety do's and don'ts for these two uh, topics to make sure you're not making any large mistakes in your hydroponic setup. So, as I had mentioned earlier, there are lethal doses of these cleaning and sanitation products that we have out here. Obviously, you should not be using super strength cleaners and degreasers on plants. You should not be dumping these into your reservoirs. You're going to kill your plants if you do that. Some of these other ones like hydrogen peroxide can be used in hydroponic solutions with living plants, but only in very small amounts. Vinegar is also very safe and innocuous. However, bleach is going to kill your plants pretty quickly. Always remember, have your safety equipment. I recommend, at a minimum, gloves and safety glasses to protect your hands and eyes. Some of these can be fairly harsh chemicals. And remember, if you do go the route of peroxide and obtain food grade hydrogen peroxide, remember that food grade is much, much more concentrated than what you get on the store shelf in a little bottle like this it actually needs to be treated like a caustic substance at that concentration until it is diluted in water. If you are running ozone, also keep in mind that ozone can be toxic to humans. If you are pumping ozone out into the air, you should not have anyone working in that area. However, you can pump ozone into a liquid into your hydro reservoir, and that is safe to work around as long as you're not running it constantly. Today we have talked about sanitation and sterilization. We talked about why it's important. We talked about the difference between sanitation and sterilization. We also covered the materials you will need to perform this, as well as what needs to be sanitized and ser sterilized, and some common do's and don'ts with sanitation and sterilization. I hope you really enjoyed this video and this got you on the right track to start sanitizing and sterilizing. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns about things that may not have been touched on in this introductory video, please let us know and we would be glad to cover those in the future. Until next time. Obviously don't drink bleach.